Edexcel Corpio Calculus 4 Integration Using Partial Fractions Integrating where the denominator has the form ax plus b times cx squared plus d. We've already seen how helpful it is when integrating to take an algebraic fraction and write it in terms of its separate partial fractions. This allows us to separate the integral and to split it up into two or more separate, hopefully easier, integrals. In the case of a quadratic factor, you may end up with more than two integrals. So one quadratic factor can produce two integrals, one of which may have the type arc tan x, as we've seen in previous sessions. So these are the features we're going to be looking at in this next set of slides. So here we're integrating x plus 5 over x plus 1, x squared plus 3. Note the quadratic factor here. And we've previously put this into partial fractions. So we had the linear x plus 1 and the quadratic x squared plus 3. And we discovered that the linear x plus 1 had a constant numerator of 1 and the quadratic x squared plus 3 had a linear numerator of 2 minus x. So that means we can do this new pair of integrals with respect to x. Now if we have a careful look at this second fraction, the numerator is 2 minus x, which is going to make life a little bit trickier for us when integrating. So one thing we can do here is leave the first fraction, we don't have a problem with 1 over x plus 1, but we can separate this second fraction into two separate fractions. Make sure you split it at the numerator, not the denominator. So splitting it at the numerator, we can have 2 over x squared plus 3 and minus x over x squared plus 3. So we end up with three integrals. We have to split this second one in order to be able to do the integration. So this first integral will involve logarithms. This second integral is going to be to do with arc tan. And this third integral is going to involve f dashed x over f of x, the derivative of the denominator is almost the numerator. So let's have a look at these integrals in a little bit more detail. So these are the integrals we're going to do. They're being written in a different order, but it's still the same problem that we're trying to achieve here. So a couple of things I would do before integrating all of this. I'm happy with the first fraction. This second fraction, you you may be able to integrate it straight off as it stands, but a useful little tip here is the denominator is x squared plus 3, and the derivative of that is 2x. So I'm going to make the numerator 2x, and at the same time, I'm going to divide by 2 to balance it up. And with this second of the pair that we got for x squared plus 3, this final one, um, just be aware that there is a times 2 there, and you could even put the times 2 next to this. And think of 3 as root 3 squared. may help you when quoting the result from your formula book. So these are just a couple of tips to help us set up and make the integration as easy as possible. So the first integral is the lin of mod x plus 1. The second integral, so I've got, I can see the half, so let's put the half in now before we forget about it. 2x is the derivative of x squared plus 3, so this can now be written as lin of the denominator, the modulus of x squared plus 3, and don't forget the 2, so I'm going to put the 2 down straight away. So we've got 1 over x squared root 3 squared, which when we apply the standard integration will be 1 over root 3 arc tan x 
over root 3 plus c. We can use our power law now just to tidy up this one. I wouldn't recommend doing too many log laws in one step, just one log law at a time. So this becomes the, the, the lin of the positive square root of x squared plus 3. And then finally, we can apply another log law to write this as lin of x plus 1 over the square root of x squared plus 3. And there is a complete solution to the original integration. So the key things to be aware of here, we need to make sure you set up the correct partial fractions. So if you're creating the partial fractions, don't forget you need something linear over the quadratic denominator. And we need to also split this into two separate integrals. So that one fraction has been split into these two separate fractions to be integrated. The first one we recognise as a fairly standard log integral. The second one I balanced up by making it a 2x and dividing by 2 at the same time. And the third one, it may be helpful to think of 3 as root 3 squared. It may help you just to quote the final um, integration. Where necessary, you may need to use log laws to simplify the answer. So as ever with these integrals, you need to always check that the denominator has a higher power than the numerator. And then you need to split the algebraic fraction into its correct partial fractions. This allows you to then split the integral into separate, easier integrals. In the case of quadratic factors, you may end up with two separate integrals, as we saw in the previous example. One of these may involve arctan x, and the other one may be a more typical logarithmic problem. If there is more than one logarithm in the answer, then it, these can be combined into a single logarithm, using the log laws in the appropriate order. And that again assumes that the coefficients are relatively simple to work with. So that brings us to the end of integration using partial fractions.